Back up match. Oh, Pete looks interested. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to make fun of Pete for that because a lot of times I get bored sitting over there because – we make you wait. We make you make them wait a long yeah. time, and now I'm doing it. So I, you know, I feel I feel bad for him. Yeah, now you're on the other side. Now you see what it's like. All right, Peter Ingram um, coming off of a Grand Prix top four at Grand Prix Denver. Team GP, I know, because my team lost to him uh -huh. in day two. I was I was hoping you were going to say in top four. No, I wish I could say that. I actually lost to Peter in that team match. Played a nice little game there. All right. Well, Pete does have uh, looks like a reasonable opener. Uh, Thought Scour thing in the ice. Arclight Phoenix needs to find something like Faithless Looting to get the engine rolling. Looks like he has it. So this is kind of interesting because, like, if I'm Pete Ingram, I kind of... Okay, so he doesn't know what he's playing against yet. Yeah, it could be uh, Death Shadow. But the fact that Benjamin didn't shock here, the jig's going to be up real soon. If I'm Peter, though, it's time to, like, faithless looting my thing in the ice into the graveyard and, um, like, thought scar myself, hope to get creatures, like, stuff like that. I think he's got to do all that stuff now and hope for the best. Like, he's got to get a little fancy to win what looks to be a horrific matchup. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, Pete, you know, once he figures out what he's playing against, he's going to be putting an emphasis on uh, what to put into the graveyard. The problem is that Benjamin can just keep cycling things and not – put a living in onto the stack uh, until he is good and ready to do so. Well, right now, Lau does have a copy of Violent Outburst in hand. Again, don't know if Ingram actually knows what he's up against this round or not. As he'll play it, he'll, excuse me, search up his team fence and enters the battlefield tab. Now Ingram will draw a copy of Arclight Phoenix. Probably knows he could be playing against like a, a weird dredge deck to play Street Wraith, you know? You yep. see Black Leaf Cliffs and Stomping Grounds could be life from the loam. There's you know. thing in the ice. His archetype is very well hidden right now, which is uh, hopefully going to make for an interesting game from here on out. And it's well, not hidden anymore. I was going to say, let's see, let's see, let's see how, how hidden it is. Yeah, Cycle, Archfiend, if near. That's no. in one deck. Yep. That we, is in one whole deck. Things are no longer, things should no longer be hidden to Peter Ingram. And if I were Peter Ingram, I would be like, oh boy, this is bad for me. Yeah, so. Uh, Benjamin has the option here. He could just go for uh, a Violent Outburst into Living In right now, putting uh, Archfiend of Infear and Street Wraith onto the battlefield and getting rid of the thing in the ice. But I think he wants to go a little bit bigger. You want to uh, build your graveyard just a little bit, um, but he's opting to, to go the other way. All right. He's just saying, I'm not messing around. I'm going to play Living In right now. Main deck, Anger of the Gods, is nice. Yeah, he's got one copy and then three main deck copies of uh, of Beast Within as well. So he's got some cards that go past the Cascade <laughs> scale. I might just be getting on camera all sorts of times this weekend. That's true. Bunch of beasts, baby. Anger, I'm going to take a look at the cards that uh, Benjamin has cascaded by. Among them, Anger of the Gods, as Todd did mention, and a bunch of lands. And all of these cards are going to go to the bottom after... Benjamin randomizes them. Do you want to bet Pete's not going to cut them? Oh, man, no one ever cuts the Cascade cards. Are you kidding? No, no one ever cuts the uh, uh, the Vivian Reed. Oh, that's, uh, really? Did you present on that one? Yes, it's random. <laughs> it's stupid. I didn't know that, actually. Now, I, I do want to point out, Benjamin does have access to a Street Wraith in hand, which he chose not to use here. Uh, he could have basically just discarded it to, to put it on the battlefield for free. Uh, instead, putting a lot of value on uh, Arclight Phoenix's uh, return ability. You know, Pete, Pete's deck does a great job of uh, getting Arclight Phoenix into the graveyard and putting it on the battlefield quickly. And saving that, sh that uh, Fairy Macabre is uh, going to be hugely important here in just a minute. Archfiend of Ifnir, 5 mana, 5-4 five, flyer. When you cycle or discard another card, you put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent controls. Sees a little bit of play here. Rare from Amonkhet. Busted in its limited format. This Peter's going to do a lot of adding cards to his graveyard here with Thought Scours and Faithless Lootings. Yeah, he's about to get embarrassed. Arclight Phoenix, plural. Phoenixes are going to come back. You're excited about something. What are you excited no, about? He has a fairy macabre in hand. He could have just got both of them. What does he care about those? They're three twos. But he just for free would get to exile the, the, the two Phoenixes. Maybe he wants to get the Faithless Lootings. Look, I get it. 
I get it. I'm just saying those three twos don't care. We're talking about they block. Do they? Yes. Do they block well? Oh no, they don't. There you go. I knew you'd okay. get there. All right. You're the good one in the booth. Okay. I'm I'm the mediocre washed one. Okay, just cycle two things. There he is. Okay. There he is. He's home. I knew you'd get there. Man. <laughs> Look, do, I can't. I, do I, those arc light phoenixes matter? Dude, I can't. It's hard for me to give up that value. You know, that that's why you're playing the card Fairy Macop. You take away the graveyard related synergy stuff. I'm taking out. I'm taking out those faithless lootings, maybe. Or that thing in the ice in case I have to cast another living in. That's all I'm interested in doing with the old fairy macabre. Because mm. I'm looking at these two three twos and I'm just thinking, meh. Can't even attack with them. Certainly aren't going to be able to block with them well. Lau going to play a blood crypt tapped. Looks like he might be going to old fulminator mage. Yep. Take care of the steam vents. Well, we'll see if Lau wants to do anything else this particular turn. And we'll just pass the turn back. So he's taking a much more conservative approach to this particular game as Benjamin Lau as we head back over to Peter Ingram. Yeah, Pete, a little light on mana here for how many uh, draw spells he's played. Yeah. You know, Faithless Looting, two copies of Thought Scour, three copies of Thought Scour. And it uh, looks like he just milled over a bunch of lands. Thing in the ice here from Ingram is going to enter the battlefield with four counters, of course. I'm pretty sure that's the Jungle Weaver, and that's yeah. game! Yeah. <laughs> going to cycle that one. How many Jungle... I haven't seen Jungle Weaver in a long time. That boy got reach. <laughs> is that a Jungle Weaver? I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a green card. It was green AF. What is that? It may have been a Beast Within. Maybe one of the new Beast Withins. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good for you. You wanted to be on camera. Yeah, but not not like this. Rawr! Rawr! What? What are you doing? The spider rars. Yeah, okay. This one, because it's so big. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it chitters. I hope not. That sounds... No, that's, that's scary. It's like a... Uh, Arachnophobia, the movie. Yeah, that movie scared me a lot when I was a kid. Oh, same. Yeah. Extremely same. Yes. That's why I'm, that's probably the reason I'm scared of spiders today. Yeah. All right, double block. All right, so we can beast within one, combat damage the other, and then uh, uh, now use fair macabre, I guess. Or he's just letting it die. All okay. right, so I think I'm on to, I think I'm onto the plan here a little bit. I'm, I, I'm trying to piece together what Benjamin's up to, right? So... Maybe he'll fairy macabre next time, in which case then the first time that he didn't is strange. I believe he has another uh, the ability to play another copy of Living End off of a Cascade spell and wants to get some more stuff back. I'm trying to piece together what the plan is right now. All I know is he could have attacked for a lot of damage over the last two turns if he had just discarded fairy macabre. I agree. I agree. Yeah. It's looking, it, it's looking like... Benjamin is maybe trying to piece together a plan on the fly. I think uh, Ben might be trying to trick Pete here. Uh, the Beast Within, if, if he flips the thing in the ice, uh, transforms it into the Awoken Horror, mm -hmm. that actually returns the Street Wraith to his hand, which he can then cycle. <laughs> and then he can cast Violent <laughs> Outburst number two. Which he then he can, at number ooh, two. Which he can then cycle. Uh, that's what we call doing it. Okay. We're All right. doing it. Let's see what comes next for old uh, Petey Boy. Well, he's still light on lands. Because it looks like he's got Lightning Bolt, third thing in the ice, a couple Crackling Drakes to maximize velocity, but just not enough blue mana to, to cast uh, all of his uh, blue draw spells. Let's see what this is. Blow up that land. Blow up that land. Yeah, land, land destruction strat. Mr. Gorbachev, blow up that <laughs> land. I'm very, I'm very pro land, land D strat. Very, very pro. Yeah. All right. Yeah, see yeah. you later, Island. Oh, he gets a he gets a Todd Anderson token. Yep. This this is the sad Todd Anderson token. It's gonna be swept away by living in because the the beast within's never really like you, the the three threes never matter nah, in not this really. scenario. From Thrag Tusk, the three three matters pretty regularly. Yeah. Beast within, nah. All right. Let's go. 
What do I even want to do here? <laughs> I don't even know. EOT. Let's go. Fair Macabre, the the two Arclight Phoenixes, and then Violent Outburst. That's what I want. This attack is bold. Look at this attack. He can he can use Violent Outburst to plus one power to kill the thing in the eyes of thing that is blocked. <laughs> and not cast the living in. He's so stoic. Yeah. Block. I'm so confused. Beat. Yeah, Block. Pete doesn't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thumbs up. Yeah. There it is. Hard cast. Uh, I don't know. Deadshot Minotaur. Let's let's do it. All right. Here is Violent Outburst. So we're going to find another living end here in a moment. There it is. Okay. Now, uh, Ben can still uh, do stuff with the living end on the stack. Neither of these cards has resolve. Yeah, the, the Violent Outburst and the living end both uh, uh, staying on the stack so Ben can maintain priority and use the uh, Fair Macabre to take care of two creatures from the graveyard. If he chooses, which honestly he might choose Thing in the Ice and Arclight Phoenix since, yep. um, you know, the Arclight Phoenix is not a huge deal. Looks like he's going to take care of both the Arclights. Okay. So now Living End's going to resolve, which means that Living End will bring back a couple of knuckleheads here for Ben. Fairy Macabre, Fulminator Mage, and Arc Fiend, if near. And Peter will get a Thing in the Ice with four counters on it. It's almost the same battlefield he would have had if he had just discarded Fairman Cop yeah, three turns ago. That appears to be the case. Thing the Ice is down to three counters. Maybe Ben's first time playing this matchup. Not sure. That's fine. I'm just saying. Got a card in your deck called Fairman <laughs> Just use it sometimes, you know? Oh, yeah. Speed that thing in the ice up. Vroom. It has plus one, plus one, and haste. That's nice. And defender. That is, that is also a defender. Th That's the thing. Look, when you're out here trying to win a tough matchup, sometimes you got to maximize the velocity of thing in the ice. We out here. Just trying to win his Pete. Even if him. Pete draws an island next turn or a blue source, he still can't flip thing in the ice. Pretty sure. I think it can trip into something that transforms it. Oh, no, he has the maximized velocity plus. I think he still has yeah. Serum Vision. So. He's live. Hey, there's Kessig Wolf Run. That's uh, threatening some damage. All right, so this is a lot of damage here. It's going to be for four, five, six, six and five, eleven. Yep. All right. Pete's got one turn to draw. Blue mana. He drew it. mana morphos. That ain't it. Dead. Pick up your two permanents. Go home. Benjamin Lau is going to win game number one here over Peter Ingram. As Living End takes care of Is It Phoenix in the first game. I'm going to throw shade for a sec. Okay. This living end deck must be really good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty well. well. I don't know if it's. It's probably pretty well positioned. I don't know. I mean, this is a Phoenix that can't ever win. Uh, we we watch Ross peel, real good. Yeah, I guess. Okay, so Ingram that turn could have drawn a blue source to play Serum Visions and then. Uh, jumpstart maximize velocity, which would have transformed Thing of the Ice into a Woken Horror and bounced those creatures. Yes. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Arc Fiend if Ifnir is not a horror. Uh, I can't say with any amount of certainty now. Is, well, now that you say it, me neither. You want to guess? I do know Horror of the Broken Lands is a horror. True. And that is uh, one of the cyclers that they usually I, I wouldn't now. be surprised if Arc Fiend is a horror. I'm pretty sure it's Demon. Arch, Arc Fiend you signifies yeah, strikes, like, you know. Yeah. Demon. Demon confirmed. Demon there confirmed. Is. All right, let's go to the sideboard ah, here. Horror of the Broken Lands, though, definitely in the in the list. The tech for the let's matchup. Go. Three of Bray, three Surgical Extraction, two Anger of the Gods, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Dispel, a Flame Slash, a Spell Pierce, and a Rowl. Is it a Vesroy? All right. Yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit earlier about the, the sideboard options that Pete has uh, access to. Uh, normally, things like Dispel, not very good here. Uh, I think the only cards that can really come in, uh, Spell Pierce, Surgical Extraction, but neither of these are all that great. On Benjamin Lau's side... Four Ingot Chewer, four Leyline of Sanctity, four Leyline of the Void. A lot of pregame effects, along with a... Hey, you got a bingo on there for that, I think. Do I? Oh, for pregame effects? Oh, no, I have a pregame effect. Never okay. mind. All right, we might hit that one. Anger the Gods, Fairy Macabre, Shriek Maw. I guess old Shrieky. 
Um, yeah, I mean, you just want ways to, to clean up thing in the ice. Uh, you want the Famicom to be able to take care of Arclight Phoenix so they can't uh, get one of their nut draws. Anger of the Gods also can help with that. Uh, Leyline of the Void, uh, we've talked about it's not all that great against the Ezet Phoenix deck because they are kind of designed with it in mind. Uh, cards like Crackling Drake over Bedlam Reveler uh, mean that you aren't nearly as affected by uh, effects like Leyline of the Void or Rest in Peace that you normally would be. Um, other than that, you know, the, I think uh, Anger of the Gods, Fairy Macabre, Shriek Maw, and you can make an argument for a couple of Line of the Voids just to shut off Arclight Phoenix Nut Draws, uh, but I don't think it's necessary. You ready to do a promo? Yeah. All right, this is your first shot at game night. Good luck. Oh, coming in December, that's right now, we have game night. This is Bramble Hopper Elite. Uh, if you go to go.starstadiums.com slash game night, you can uh, get your in-store program representative on the phone. Keep going. Or not. What's on the next not month? O not over yet. Uh, yeah, so in January, we got Purdukin. Uh, if you type an exclamation point Purdukin in the chat right now, you have a chance to win the Mythic Madness uh, promotion that we've been doing. Uh, this is going to be the uh, game night uh, token for January. And also, we're going to be doing sleeves now instead of pins. Okay. Let's take a look at February. Uh, we got Yeti Steady Go, my favorite. Uh, that looks like a Yeti. Is uh, that sledding. is your favorite? Because that's going to replace you as a beast token. So, mm. how do you feel about it now? I want to fight it. Okay. I'm That'll mad. be in February where you can fight it. Yeah. At your so, local uh, game night. Go.starcgames.com slash game night. Uh, if you do not have game night at your local game store, make sure to tell your local game store owner that you would very much like so and have them contact uh, its store representatives at starcgames.com. Not bad. Not it bad. wasn't great, though. Some work to be done. Well, yeah, I did. you threw it at me when I wasn't even ready. I don't bet, know what I'm you, supposed to say. You bet I did. You have a there's a there's probably like a like a piece of paper somewhere that's just like this is what you say. Like Mr. P. Mm. Hoffling's like, in, I want you to say this. An info about, sheet about my programs. You know? And if you don't, you're fired. Yeah. And now I'm half I'm half fired. I did a half job. That's half all right. Job. That's all right. I'm sure the Twitter Twitter crowd will give you some positive feedback. <laughs> That's what I imagine. <laughs> oh, you did a good job shilling, Todd. At strong sad. <laughs> You're just a good shilling. Here's a thought scour. I'm going to target himself, will Peter Ingram. Faithful suiting and metamorphose will be placed into the graveyard. And now, many things in a lot of icicles. Heading back over to Benjamin Lau, who's going to do some cycling. Yeah, Thinking of the Ice, one of my favorite cards uh, ever printed. It was the one of the key two drops alongside Jace Vern's Prodigy in my uh, Pyromancer's Goggles decks, a way to generate a lot of advantage by uh, playing a bunch of Tormenting Voice type effects in my deck. Well, Shriek Maul just took care of Thing in the Ice, unfortunately, for Peter Ingram. That's one of his ways to go about winning the game. And if a Living End does resolve, which I imagine it will at some point, Shriek Maul will come back and kill the old, uh, the old Thing in the Ice again. So uh, not, not great start here for Ingram based yeah. off of what he's seen from Lau. One of the strengths of Shriek Maw in the deck, yeah, the, the creature will come back, but so will Shriek Maw to check it again. Uh, but it keeps it from doing anything absurd in the early turns of the game. So really just buying time for Benjamin to keep churning through his deck and find one of those Violent Outbursts or uh, Demonic Dreads. And I'm going to draw two cards here with Faithless Suiting. Going to find two cards to discard. You see him taking on discarding these two lands. The last game he got Mana Screwed from the Fulminator Mage yeah. and the Beast Within. I'm going to rethink that one. Looks like Bolt and Scalding Tarn are going to go to the graveyard. Or Scalding Tarn is going to stay in Ingram's hand. So we're going to go back over to Benjamin Lau, who's again off to a nice little start here. Picked up a copy of Simeon Spirit Guide. This deck does play many copies of that card to increase its speed. Not much past that as a cycle here of Horror of the Broken Lands. Means the two of those are in the graveyard along with a copy of Shriek Maw. Yeah, here Benjamin just uh, trying to find the right turn to put his creatures onto the battlefield. If he is familiar with Ross Merriam's decklist from last week, he should know roughly 72 or more of the cards in this Is That Phoenix deck and know that there's only a handful of ways, uh, two or three, for him to be able to interact with Living End. Ingram's going to sacrifice a Scalding Tarn, get himself a basic mountain. Crackling Drake here would go a long way in getting the party started. But uh, I don't think it would be enough. 
Yeah, I think the way for Ingram to steal games in this matchup is Crackling Drake plus Maximize Velocity. But oh, yeah. That, that requires a, a decent amount of setup and time, and those are things that just are not really afforded to him, unfortunately. I mean, he also only has one copy of Maximize Velocity, so it's not even something he can uh, rely on for the most part. I mean, at this point, Ben is just taking his time. Pete hasn't presented him with a, uh, a threat outside of that first thing in the ice. Um, hasn't put Nargali Phoenix into the graveyard yet. And uh, Benjamin just going to keep on cycling and, and until he finds the right spot to cast that living in and uh, apply maximum pressure. One on top, one on the bottom for the scry from Serum Visions. Next up is Faithless Looting here for Ingram. So he'll draw two. One is Anger of the Gods. The second is a Manamorphos. Here, Pete. Pardon me, actually an Arclight Phoenix, I think. I take that back. Pete picked up a Phoenix on the scry. Mm -hmm. Actually bottomed a thing in the ice, which I would have loved to have seen him uh, Faithless Looting and discard the thing in the ice as well as the Arclight Phoenix since he already had... Uh, Oh, no, that last card's a Spell Pierce. I thought it was a Serum Visions. So he actually does have his one way to interact with the cast living in. Um, so if he plays... Ooh. He thought about playing Metamorphos to get back Arclight Phoenix. Huh. So I think, I think the reason Pete is weighted here is simply because he feels like he might have to get kind of lucky. Maybe he casts the living end next turn, gets the opportunity to spell pierce, and never finds a way to cascade into it again, right? Sure. It's, it's, it's a big-time finger cross, but this matchup is so bad here for Ingram that, look, you gotta, if you got to get lucky, you got to get lucky. Sure. No, I like it. I mean, he could also just find Surgical Extraction and take away either the Shriek Maw or the Two Horror of the Broken Lands out of the graveyard, uh, which is also something uh, to give him a, a shot to win. It's one of the things about Modern that's very interesting uh, uh, and uh, very unlike the other formats is that you have matchups that feel just so incredibly polarized. You know, like this Living End versus Phoenix deck, if you just look at both decks on, on paper, I don't feel like Is That Phoenix has very much of a chance at all. Um, that's just not true in a lot of cases in, in Standard. Or even Legacy, for that matter. I agree with that. Lau's going to sacrifice Vernon Catacombs. Fall down a little bit lower. And let's see what land he wants to dig up. He'll go with a Stomping Ground untapped. Now keep in mind he does have a copy of Simeon Spirit Guide in hand. So were he to go for Living End here and Peter were to play Spell Pierce, the combination of an untapped land and a Simeon Spirit Guide would be able to trump that. I'm well, curious to see if that's what Lau wants to go for or does he maybe want to just suspend Living End and take a slower approach to this game. Five mana. Oh, well. Love it. Your opponent is not doing anything. Only has three cards in hand. Hard cast your 5-4. Yeah? Just get him. This is actually really tough for Ingram, too, because this entire game, you assume, right, if you're playing against Living End, that they have the ability to at least cast Living End once in some capacity, especially with a creature on the battlefield. So what Lau is doing here is he's basically just kind of towering over Ingram and just kind of saying, if things get hairy, I can bring my graveyard back onto the battlefield. I can just do that. There's really nothing you can do about it. Ingram going to play a Mana Morphos. And get our handy-dandy mana counters here very quickly. He'll draw a card. He's got an opt-in hand now. Yeah, I think he's really looking to uh, flashback Faithless Looting to get rid of these extra lands, though. Going to scry one here with the ops. See where this card's going to go. All right, we'll keep it. So crackling Drake. It's not too shabby. Inger might go that route. And he's going to use the floating mana here in the two. Playing the land pre-combat, making sure he holds up blue mana for Spell Pierce uh, should it uh, end up helping him against a living end next turn. Hmm. That's a little interesting play there. Ingram discarding lands instead of maybe one of the Crackling Drakes. 
Yeah, I'm not sure uh, which which mode he would want to go here. He's losing currently on the battlefield, though. I'd like maybe holding one Drake and discarding one Drake, right? Because that would make it so that you can cast a Drake next turn to maybe check the Archfiend, while also making sure you have one uh, in your graveyard in case Benjamin does decide to go for uh, the living end. It's tough, though, because if you discard both, Benjamin can say, okay, well, now I'm just never going to cast this living end. I'm just going to cast creatures from my hand. Yeah. You know, he has a reasonable amount of mana. I think he's maybe one short of being able to cast any big any big creature in his deck. So. All right, here comes the attack with the Arc Fiend of Ifnir. Five power flyer is where Benjamin Lau is going to start. Curious to see if Ingram wants to try to tender a block or just take these five points of damage. And looks like he is going to tender a block. Or not. Yeah, a little <laughs> unsure of himself. All right, he'll take the five. Does Lau have a follow play? To note, Lau on his turn drew a copy of Leyline of the Void. A little late for that one. Yeah, just a touch. Just a bit. I would have, if he was going to attack there, I, I actually like playing Leyline of the Void before attacking. Uh, so that you, you know, if, if Pete does want to block, the Argali Phoenix will be gone forever. So it basically just makes your Ar Archfiend unblockable. Lau thinking about playing Violent Outburst now to resolve a living end. And also has living in in hand that he can suspend. We don't see that mode on living in often. And we, like I mentioned about that ley line, he could hard cast that too. He was now going to play via an outburst. So he'll go cascading. There that is. There's a living end. Two whore of the broken lands and a shriek maw in the graveyard. Uh, attention, magic players. We're looking for two. So got his damage in with the Arc Fiend, and now going to bring some big creatures back from the graveyard. Yeah, the, the Horror of the Broken Lands uh, getting pumped whenever you decide to uh, cycle a card uh, means that they are pretty stout threats. The Shriek Maw checks the thing in the ice that would be coming back from the graveyard, and uh, I believe the only other creature at that point is just the Arc Light Phoenix on the battlefield, which would go to the graveyard. Yep. So he's trading, uh, essentially he would be trading Arc, Arc Fiend of Inferior, for uh, two Horror of the Broken Lands and a Shriek Maw versus nothing on the other side of the battlefield. That's a pretty good spot to be. Pete basically forced here to use that Spell Pierce. Now, Benjamin has a Spear Guide to pay, which he does. So now, Harry. Living is going to resolve. Here come the Arc Fiend. Oh, excuse me, here come the Horror of the Broken Lands and the Shriek Maw to kill the thing in the ice. And now, lau has got a nice little battlefield built up here. It would have been really funny to me if uh, P had gone through, like, the Shriek mod didn't exist. P had gotten to go through all the iterations to transform Thing in the Ice into the Awoken Horror. And then only to realize that doesn't bounce the Horror of the Broken Lands. <laughs> yeah, doesn't <laughs> return these things. <laughs> Creature type Horror of the Broken Lands. 5 mana 4-4 four, four from Amon Cat. When you cycle or discard another card, Horror of the Broken Lands gets plus 2, plus 1 to a turn. Only a black to cycle. Yeah, um, I think the key here is is only one mana uh, to cycle is uh, makes it desirable in a deck like Living End where you just want a bunch of really uh, big creatures that cycle for a cheap amount of mana. Uh, we've seen you know in the past builds that play a lot of things like a uh, Deadshot Minotaur, uh, Minotaur uh, creatures that were not very big. You know um, the the four mana three three whose name excuse me the blue black one architects of will Doug. architects of will yes uh, those being replaced of course by desert Saradon, the six mana six four yep. uh, as well as horror of the broken lands just very large creatures yeah and I remember when those cards got printed back in Amonkhetta a couple of years ago and people immediately were just like oh wow there's some upgrades finally to living in which yep. I'm not sure that was their purpose but you know what they count yep. and they are upgrades over some of the. Bad cyclers that had to be played beforehand, that's for sure. Ingram is trying to rack his brain and figure out how he gets himself out of this situation because it's not a particularly good one here for him. Spoiler alert. 
two crackling drakes and a thing on the ice here for Peter Ingram. I mean, he's got a really big crackling drake, and I think that's basically his only option here is to just play a big crackling drake. Uh, I mean, he could just, like, flashback Faithless Looting, try to hit a chain of spells to bring back uh, Arclight Phoenix, but uh, I don't think that's going to get the job done. The problem is any cycling effect from Benjamin – uh, represents almost lethal, and he would have to trade. <gasps> oh, God, I hope he can survive a turn. Why? He drew the maximized velocity. You sure? I'm positive. All right. Oh, baby. I, I don't even want to count the graveyard. I'm just hoping it's lethal. <laughs> you're, just you're just assuming. Oh, no. Come on. Come on, darling. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Is this, is this you audibly five, counting the graveyard? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He is short. He is unfortunately short, ladies and gentlemen. Unless, how many faithless lootings are flashbacked? He's at oh, four. No, Benjamin's at 14. What happened? Cycle to Street Wraith. That's lethal. <laughs> I swear it's lethal. Well, let's see how much damage Benjamin can deal this turn. He's got, uh, it's six. It's nine right now at Shriek Maw, plus the Horror of the Broken Lands. That's lethal. <laughs> or is it? Yes! Yes, it still is. He's going to do it! Ooh, Ingram's very quickly Oh, he's going to do it! Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> if he's playing this fast, he's dead. Crackling Drake, draw a card, maximize velocity. Oh, yes. yes! You're yes. dead. Yes. Yes. You're dead. Yes! yes. You're dead. Yeah. Let's count them together. It's 15. I already did it. It's 15. I, I cannot believe you cycled the Street Wraith. It was only lethal because he cycled the Street Wraith. Attack you. Well... I did not expect to go to a third game here between Peter Ingram and Benjamin Lau, but that's why we play the games. Is it Phoenix all tied up against Living End? Things are getting interesting here in the future Something match about area. This is a Phoenix deck. It just keeps winning out of nowhere. It really does. <laughs> well, we're going to watch more of this third and final game of round at number 10. But first, a couple of messages from our friends over at Ultimate Guard. Both those products will be available at StarCityGames.com and other retailers beginning February 1st, 2019. The Ammonite Anti-Theft anti Backpack and the Katana Sleeves by our friends at Ultimate Guard. I just want to say I've shuffled the Katana Sleeves. Luckily, uh, Cedric Phillips, who works for Ultimate Guard, uh, had a prototype pack. They are Ching. nice. Ching. Jerry Thompson had some. He showed them to me, and I was just like, wow, they shuffled pretty good. He's like, yeah. Uh, my friend has played with those for eight rounds already. That's right. Yeah, that's and they're right. Still dank. Yeah, that's right. So I'm definitely looking forward to trying out those katana sleeves myself when they become available in February. More information over at ultimateguard.com. Just so you folks know, at the end of this round, we have our Mythic Madness giveaway. Make sure you do use the uh, the word exclamation point Perdukin. Yeah, that one's not hard to spell. Type that in P U R R Dukin. Yeah, Dukin is D-O-U-E-O-Kin. That's correct. Dukin. 
P U R R D O U. Ken Masters from Street Fighter. Yeah. Dragon Punch. Hurricane Kick. Yeah, why couldn't we just been per Hurricane Kick? <laughs> per. It's you know. not really doesn't have the same ring to it, I would argue, but that's one man's one man's argument. For you, a Street Fighter player. Yeah. Who you, was your character? Blanca. Nice. I just like I just spammed electrocute. Nice. You know. Nice. He was he just had the best mannerisms, you know. He's an animal like you. Arr, arr. So yeah. Yep. Arr, arr. It's perfect. Dude, yeah, actually, it, that would actually. You be saw a good you've seen my beast token, right? Yeah. I'm literally just Blanca. Yeah. Well, that would be a good Halloween okay. costume for you, actually. That's true. Except I would have to put on either a lot of makeup or a green suit. Yeah, just move, just like do it that all the way. Way. Because like you could do your, I, I do. definitely think you could do your hair like Blanca. That's fair. For sure. Yeah. And then yeah, just just go animal. We'll get yeah. some electricity around you. I or would something. probably look better than the whoever did Blanca's makeup and hair in the movie Street Fighter. Oh Lighter, boy, because it was nasty. We try we try not to talk about that movie. Why? Because it is it is a classic. Horrible. Hor- Van da- yeah. Van Dam was guile. That's all you need oh, to know. Oh, Mister America, aka yeah. Austrian guy. Yeah. Are yeah. you serious? Yeah. What's better is that the guy from Adam's Family was the boss man. That's right. That's yeah. right. He was M Bison. Just, just a truly, truly horrendous movie. And I hope at some point they make a good Street Fighter movie, but <laughs> I'm not. Well, okay. So here's like, <laughs> look, look. With what they've done, with, time has passed. With what they've done with comic book movies, anything is possible. Yeah. Right. Okay. Name me like a good video game movie. <sighs> just like one. I'll have to think about it. Like Blood Rain. Blood Rain was a real good one. I'll have to think about it. There's got to be at least one good There's one. There's not. E- e- even the even the Angelina Jolie Tomb, R- Tomb Raider movie is no, like those are, of course those are bad. It's the one that that's the one that people go to the most. Ugh. It's not. Great. No, it's not good. Uh, what about mean? Maximum Pain? Max Pain with Mark Wahlberg. I didn't see that one. No, it's not. I'm good. assuming it was just it's shoot him up. Yeah, it's not good. With no real plot. No. No character. What development. about Assassin's Creed? Yeah. Okay. That was uh, Michael Fassbender's mm-hmm. version mm-hmm. of the Jake Gyllenhaal Prince of Persia movie. <laughs> That's actually just true. <laughs> and Prince of Persia is horrific. Oh, yeah. Oh, what is this? Oh, yeah. No, this is uh, Doom Blade, your guy, because I have a ley line of the void in play. Thing that, okay. Thing of the Ice is, like, one of the only cards that, that Benjamin's, like, really afraid of here. And just using, like, he, he has multiple Cascade cards in hand. And I think just using this to kill the thing in the ice because his hand is not very good is fine. All right. Dang the ice down. Clearly he doesn't have a cycler in his hand. That much is clear. Once we're going to head back over to Pete Ingram. A lightning axe to draw. Looks like Pete does have access to Crackling Drake in hand, if I'm not mistaken. That's a way to win the game. We saw it last game. Yep, and it does get pumped through the ley line of the void, which is... Very important. In my article this week, I actually talked about potentially supplanting uh, Crackling Drake with Enigma Drake because it was just one mana cheaper. And the deck seems to not run out of cards very often. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the real strength of Crackling Drake, I think, lies in its ability to fight through all of the graveyard removal. I agree. I agree. That is definitely a bonus. And it mattered that last game. That's for sure. As Ingram's going to play his team events tap and pass the turn back over. Maybe. Yeah, let's have a Metamorphose. Okay. I don't get it. Is this upkeep? I think so. Yeah. Okay. I'm as confused as you. Ah, we're gonna. Surgical? We might th- thought scour surgical. Okay. Or just hard cast surgical, targeting living in, and then we're gonna have a real game on our hands. Okay, so now he's gonna thought scour. Himself, I like this because he's just going to try to kill with Crackling Drake and Surgical. Okay, well. This is it. This is how you do it. How did we get here? Well, uh, Benjamin kept a looser gooser with a ley line of the void. He willy nillied a demonic dread on a living end. And his hand is bad. Like, awful, awful gross bad to the point where. Where Benjamin Lau is probably going to hard cast the Simeon Spirit Guy this turn. Oh, he's going to go. He's going to get AP. Yeah. A his, smash. His plan this game is to use Demonic Dread 
for the actual text on the card. No blocking. You're crackling, Drake, sir. No blocking. You're crackling, allowed. Drake. Yep. Can't block. I can't block. My Simeon Spirit Guides, plus one power from Violent Outburst, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is maybe the worst hand in recorded history. Yeah. This is my favorite match of all time because you look miserable. <laughs> well. <laughs> Best of SCG Live. Demonic Dread and Violent Outburst don't have text anymore, really. And then there are two Simeon Spirit Guides. Yeah, you ain't never cast no Grey Ogre before, sir? Oh, no, I've cast it many times. Many times. You know, what I, you know what I would do right now if yeah. I were Benjamin Lau? What's that? I would exile both Simeon Spirit Guides and walk to the bathroom. Just leave? Just leave. Okay. Because, I, you know, I would have to throw up. Well, if he does draw, like, a five-mana threat, he can use those Simeon Spirit Guides and play, like, an Arc Fiend of Ifnir. You're right. That's a thing. Yeah. One mana away from the old Desert Ceridon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Top of deck. Think about that, Anderson. I think uh, I think we're doing it. Yeah, I think it's 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 not exactly doing it. Except it's, it's not. That thing's going to die. We have, we have Lightning X. Yeah. Just for those of you at home, Pete's just leaving his, his uh, exile zone where his graveyard would normally be because, uh, you know, he doesn't have a way to get Leyline off the battlefield. And it's just easier there instead of a giant pile above his deck or whatever so he can see everything. Yeah, Pete. Pete feeling good. Doesn't even need the maximized velocity anymore. Oh, no. Wants, uh, wants as many threats as he can get. Just can't find the land, though. That's the thing. Well, those two cards are going to the bottom, potentially. Desperately looking for a land here. Almost positively going to use the Lightning Axe to take care of the Archfiend. Uh, discarding Lightning Bolt seems like the play. Swing. Archfiend down. Let's go back over to Lau, who's got, you know, those two cards in hand. It's a land. <laughs> there it yes, is. it is. Back to Pete Ingram. Thing in the ice. Thought Scar myself. Mill over two lands, throw up. <laughs> Trigger, think of this! One, two, draw. Steam vents tapped. Pete did miss his thing in the ice trigger. Oh, oh he's getting uh, he's getting antsy. Look at him. He was getting up in his chair. Yeah, I, I think Ingram knows he's actually going to so somehow win a match that I cannot fathom him winning. I mean, some okay. This is what I like to call the fail rate. In modern, a lot of these decks that do wonky stuff... Some even even if they are one of the most consistent versions, right? Sometimes they fail. They every do. every deck in modern has some amount of fail rate, and this is it. Crackling Drake is currently a fourteen power flyer. That's nice. Not bad. It's pretty good. Not bad. I I, I hope that Ben Pill Streak Maw just so this game keeps going. Get a little sweat. Yeah. Oh, he drew something good. Archfiend? Street Wraith? So, oh, it's a Street Wraith. He's thinking about cycling it. <laughs> because he's at 17. He, he, he cycled Street Wraith last yep. game, and it killed him. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Big draw. Can't wait to see what this is. Ooh, three mana. Look out. Nope, oh, yep. Bang. Todd Anderson, come on down. Put me on, coach. <laughs> I'm ready to play. Dude, you, you even get to attack? That beast token's just not even going to block soon. Nope. It's just totally not going to be able to block next turn. Another crackling <laughs> Drake. Draw and play Spire Bluff Canal. Your turn. You're dead. Pete Ingram's going to win this game and match over wow. Benjamin Lau. Two games to one. Is it Phoenix in an upset victory here over to Living End? Ingram going to move on to 8-2, and two, pleasing, I'm sure, Ben Friedman. Oh, yeah. Uh, pleasing Ben Friedman, pleasing any of the proponents of the Is That